Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. I gotta pick up my mess here guys, I have quite a little mess going on. Um, last night I worked on a snowblower. That one right over there. And we will be back on that one. I did a video, I haven't posted the video yet, so you guys don't even know about that one yet. But uh, we're back on Aaron's bike, we gotta get that carburetor stripped down. And I gotta get it into the ultrasonic cleaner, so we have a lot of stuff to do. So, um, on Aaron's bike, to finish this off, is simply carburetor. We got to address the shifter. So loose that is. And we got to address this boot. Now, this is going to be a little tricky being up on the sand, up on the bench. See how this is supposed to look? It's supposed to be a nice rubber boot like that. And this one right here clearly is just ripped off. So... We have to address that, and uh, I think that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it for his bike. Oh, and we got to fix the light. I think we got to pull this headlight out and, and test the headlight because when you turn the key on, it doesn't even come on. So it doesn't even try to come on. So I'm wondering if the headlight is actually burnt out, and if that's my whole problem. Before I go and mess with all kinds of electrical situations and everything else, it's easier to test the bulb. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to test that light, and... Um, kind of go from there so we got a few things to do tonight and uh well let's just get right into it but before i do please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when i post the video you guys get it all right let me get you guys in the stand and we're gonna get crack a lacking all right so i got my leaf set up this is an old leaf for an old table right here and you can typically find these on the side of the road people throw them out um this i had a nice table given to me that the table was no good so i kept the leaf for this purpose and it fits right on top of my workbench and then I can have that instead of stuff rolling around all over the place makes it a little nicer all right so let's get you guys into position now this is the carburetor right here off of Aaron's bike and we have to disassemble it now I already cleaned this once it didn't quite come out right and um, so we're gonna do it again and I did it that way for this video to show you guys how it was all situated and everything else because little thing I don't just do one carburetor and let me show you guys what I'm talking about all right so this is the basket that goes to my ultrasonic cleaner and this is a little coffee filter right here that you can pick up at your market and that's what I put all the little parts and pieces into but my ultrasonic cleaner is so big that I could put three or four carburetors in here at one time so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take apart this one on screen but the other carburetors that I personally have, I'm going to do that off screen. And then I throw them all in there. So, just kind of show you guys how I, how I do them. Is because to run this thing, this thing, it, it runs for about, you know, 20 minutes or so. 20 minutes to a half hour. I want to make sure it's all, all good. For those of you who haven't seen my ultrasonic cleaner, I'll show you guys what it looks like. So, this is how big the ultrasonic cleaner is. It, it's pretty big. I mean, it, holds, it has a big... The tank goes from here to about here, and it holds quite a bit. You could put a full-size four-barrel Holly carburetor right in there, which I have. So, um, this is my ultrasonic cleaner. This right here basically vibrates and heats up. It heats up quite, quite hot. Um, I've had this thing up to 68 degrees Celsius, and uh, I don't know what that is in um, Fahrenheit, but because uh, the reason it's Celsius. But it's quite high. It'll burn you. So um, I run this right here with the carburetors. And I threw some of my favorite places to get things. Steadfast Cycles um, is the place who did my ultra, um, my Nicosal coating. Barrett's Online. I bought in parts for them for the Suzuki's, the uh, Yamaha Viragos. They got a lot of good parts. Another good online company. All Balls. You guys know them. I use the All Balls bearing on my KE-102 build. Um, I use them in engines and everything else. OMCycle.com. I've gotten some cool things off of them. Uh, some parts and pieces. And of course, Wiseco Pistons. Um, so, if I get an extra sticker, I, I like to throw it on my, on my stuff. You know what I mean? So anyway, let's get back to what we're doing. All right. Let's get this thing ripped apart and we will start uh, going at it. This is an old screwdriver right here that I picked up and it's excellent for jets. In fact, it even has a small one if you, if you can unscrew it. You can actually hear it in there, but I never, never really take that apart. But 
there's a little screwdriver in the butt of this thing if you can get it apart it's brass you know so right there there's one and then take the bottom off and there's another little screw so it's like a little mini screwdriver set these are old these are from the 60s pretty neat huh but I, every time I see these type of things, and they actually have one where there's a uh, a hammer, a small hammer, and this right here, is, there's one of these that's screwing to the bottom. I got that set up too, but I'll show you where this comes in handy. So we're going to take... This is your idle mixture screw right here. And on the KEs, the KDs, the KMs, and all those, that family, they are set to one and a half turns out. And you get your spring and your needle... And I just take that, go right in that bucket right there. Okay, now, this right here, this jet right here, yes, that's a jet. That's an air metering jet. That right there goes straight through into your, um, see in the center there? Right there. That is your orifice right there. I'll, I'll get into more about that. But anyway, that right there allows air to get in there. So if that's clogged, what will happen is your bike will be like it's starving out of fuel. And this right here, if this jet is clogged, it will give you the same effect as if your gas cap vent was clogged. And it won't allow gas in. So if you have, if you, you turn your gas on your tank and you see an air bubble in your fuel line, and it's about yay big, and you're like, Kevin, it runs for a while, and then... I can't seem to restart it until the bike sits for a while. That's because air finally makes its way in through that office instead of through the front and allows the fuel to come in here. All right. So I'm going to demonstrate that for you guys real quick. I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. Okay. So now you see I have a two liter bottle here. That's going to represent your gas tank. And that's going to represent your carburetor float bowl. All right. Right now it's sucking air. So if it wasn't sucking air... Okay, try this again. All right, so see how the, wa the, the water from up top is not really going into the bottom, okay? That is simulating this jet right here, that air jet. So this is your fuel tank. This is your carburetor bowl. You need that carburetor bowl to fill up with fuel, but it can't until you add air to it. This is one of those tornado kits. And then when air is introduced, it will simply flow. Now you can see how it's, it's going right inside there. That's because air is allowing the fuel to go through the, in, the, through the fuel nipple here and fill up inside the carburetor bowl. But if this is clogged, you won't get no fuel flow. It will be very slow. To fill up so your bike will have to sit until the the, the fuel can find an, uh, another air source to escape the air from inside the bowl and then let out but that is what will happen if you don't so right now the float would be down here and this where here is jam-packed with air because the fuel is pushing down on it so what's holding it back is the air as soon as air is introduced so if i poked a little hole right here this thing is gonna it's gonna flood. So watch this. I'm gonna just crack it loose. And once you crack it loose, and air can get in there. Go like this so the air can get in. And you'll see how it go, starts to go. The air and this will have to go through the center. So right now there's an air going through the center and it's gotten to fill up inside there and it'll fill up. It's one of those tornado kits. But it's perfect to show you guys how that works. So remember, if that's clogged, that little air inlet right there, air won't be able to escape and the fuel won't be able to fill in. That's what will happen. Alright, let's move on. That was pretty cool. Glad I could show you guys that. Alright, moving on. 
So, the problem with Aaron's bike is not that at all. What's happening is the fuel um, needle and seat are allowing too much fuel in and it's leaking around the gasket. Now, you see this orange, this greenish tinge around the bowl? That's fuel that was leaking. So, what's happening is the fuel is past the fuel level in the in the uh, the bowl is past um, it's not quite past the tubes that are inside there because it's not leaking out the bottom but it's past the gasket surface and that's where it's that's where it's leaking out of so that's the part that we have to address okay all right let's get that bowl ripped off all right. I'm expecting a little bit of gas to leak out not a big deal one of the other things, too, I like to do is I like to take these screws, throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner as well. Two reasons. One, it doesn't lose them. And two, it cleans the threads. All right. So you can see how nice and clean the bowl is. I'm not worried about that. One of the things I want to check for on this, okay? So I'm going to pull out this, the, um the pin to release the pin I'm just tapping on this right here and then the, you can see the pin walking out and then you can grab it okay first thing you want to do the second you take this off because I know there was fuel in there you want to shake these you want to see if you can hear any fuel sloshing around I call these pontoons okay you want to shake it around make sure there's no no leaks in there and there isn't the other thing you can do is you shake them around like this, and then you hold them under water and see if any air bubbles come up. This one's not like that, so this one's good. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this on a flat surface. And see this this bar right here? That's where your pen goes through. One of the things I like to do is set it on a table and take a look under here and see if I see any, um, what do you call it there, any air. Any air. I meant any light, if I could see any light underneath there. So I'll take a look at that right now. If you have a flashlight, that actually helps out too. So let me just scoot you guys down. Okay. Now you see how you can't see any light. I'm looking I'm looking right under this part right here. And see how it's sitting level on the table? If you put light on the back of it, you, you don't see any, any light coming through. Now I'm gonna put something under it just to show you guys what it would look like. Okay, I got a piece of paper underneath there, so when I go like this, now you can see the light. See how it's not sitting? You're looking right here at the light. Okay, so when I take the, new, the paper away and the thing is sitting flat, see how there's no light? That means that both of my pontoons are at the same height, no light comes through. I know that these are not bent. Okay, that's how you check them for bent. Alright, so now that we know by shaking it, and feeling it and make sure there's no sloshing. You'll hear the, the fuel sloshing if these are bad. And we know that these are not filled with fuel. We know that this is level. Now, why does that matter? I'll tell you why that matters. Because if you're trying to adjust the pontoon, you adjust the float using one of these, and the other one is off, it doesn't matter what you adjust it on this side. The float is automatically off. So, that's the first thing you want to do is make sure that your float is good before you use it. It can be dirty like this. This is fine. This can clean up nicely. You don't want to scrub it. You don't want to do nothing to it. Just clean it and leave it. Now, what I like to do with these, okay, so I like these to be cleaned as well. So I put these in the bottom. Well, actually, this is going to go in the basket. I'll show you how I do it. I take the basket. Same thing as that. I take the basket. I set this in there. I take my float bowl because this this is the uh, the choke. So when you turn your choke on, it grabs fuel right from your bowl, right from that little um, jet right there. There's actually a little jet in there. So when you um, when you pull your choke, it actually sucks up fuel from that hole right there. This one's a dummy hole. This does nothing. This one is your choke. So you want to make sure that you spray a carburetor clean down there. It can come out out there. So here's what I do is I take this upside down and go like this. I put it in there so the floats are resting all the way in, like so. And I, f I flip it over. Now you're probably asking yourself why. Because now the whole entire float is submerged in, in um, 
and the solution that I have. And don't worry about air pockets because they're going to come up through these little tubes right here. Okay, so we're good there. So that's how I clean the floats. All right, we're going to move on to the next part. I take out my needle right there. I'm going to inspect it, make sure that there is no ring or groove around the needle part. If there is a little tiny groove, you can use 3,000 grit wet dry sandpaper and kind of buff it to a nice, nice shine. Okay? The other thing you're going to want to inspect is the spring tension on the back of your float. See how that moves in and out? Okay? That's a dampener. If it goes in and stays in, that's a problem. If it's slow to come out, that's a problem. If it springs right back and feels good, use it. It's good. All right, so we're moving on to down bottom here. We have the gasket. I take the gasket out. I do not ultrasonic clean these. I just put this off to the side. Okay? Gaskets can get deteriorated in the ultrasonic cleaner. They can, if it's a rubber, like an O-ring, any O-rings will get really flimsy and they will be bigger than what you started with. It expands them and it's awful. You'll never get them back in. It's, it's a pain in the neck. All right, so the next part is your main jet and your pilot jet. All right, what is the difference between the two? Hmm, glad you asked. The pilot jet is for a quarter throttle. So when you have throttle plates all the way down, you are using your pilot jet until a quarter turn, a, a quarter um, throttle. After a quarter throttle, the airspeed going over here activates the main jet. All right, so there's a brief moment where both of these jets are working together until they're not. And um, so that's right about a quarter throttle or just past, okay? So your pilot jet and your main jet have to work together at one point. Okay, so once for idle, and then this is from a quarter to full throttle is on your main jet. And this one is the one that's metered through the needle. All right, so enough of that. Let's get that ripped out. You're going to want to use a nice, sharp, see how nice this is? How, how nice and clean it is? These are the best screwdrivers for doing that. So what I like to do is I set it in until it fits in. See how nice that fits in there, guys? All right, and I push in and turn at the same time. Okay. If you use a screwdriver... That has a rounded edge. See how this is just worn out? Okay. And it's kind of twisted and it's not straight, not flat. This screwdriver right here would destroy the top of this jet and you may not be able to get it out. So you have to make sure that your flathead screwdriver that you're using is a good screwdriver, good quality screwdriver. Okay. So upon inspection on these, okay. You can see that there's a couple little holes. You want to make sure that you can see light through them. So I hold them up to a flashlight. And see if I can see, see the light right there through those two little jets. Okay, that's good. And then I want to check it for the uh, going through the center. I don't know if you guys can see or not. I'm not trying to blind you. But anyway, hold this up to the light and see if I can see light through it. And I can. If you can't, oh, there's a way you can... Um, clean these out so say this jet is completely plugged what do you do to clean it out i'm going to show you guys real quick so i take a pair of pliers put on a pair of safety glasses i gently hold it in the um what do you call it there in the pliers and you can even use a lighter for this and then i heat it up i heat up right around where the clog would be so see how this is like this i would be heating it up you know the whole length you got to be careful because the gum or the varnish that's in there will shoot out. Okay, so you want to do this outside, and you will you will see it if you pay attention to it. You'll see it. It'll come flying right out of the hole, and then you'll know you got it. And then let it cool down, and then you should be able to see light through it. And then you can clean it with carburetor cleaner after that. But if you can't get no if you can't get no light through it. And you can't get this thing clean. You can use a little torch or a lighter on it. And it will clean it out. 
Okay. The other thing you can do, too, you can buy is what they call torch tip cleaners or carburetor cleaners. I'll show you what those look like. Which looks like these. I got these at Harbor Freight. So you can get these right here. They're little brushes, but you you want to use the these ones right here, the little torch ones. And then these right here, you can literally clean out your jets with. Goes right through the center of it, and then you push them through all the way. But these right here are very hard to get into the um, the pilot jets, so that's why I use the torch the torch technique. Okay, and those are only a couple bucks. They're cheap. They're very very cheap to get. All right. So the next part, the jet. Main jet. Once again, you want to use a bigger screwdriver, but a nice quality flathead. I find that these um these screwdrivers with the bits on them work the best, and I'll show you why. See that fit? It covers the whole entire thing, and you can get a good turn on them. So these ones right here, these are the ones that you know they take the you can flip it out, and there's a small one on the other side, and there's Phillips on the other. You can get these anywhere. When you're taking these out, there's a washer. This washer was missing off this carburetor when I took it apart. It's a brass washer, and it's got a, th a certain thickness. The reason what this does is there's a little shoulder in there. If you guys can see that, I'll see what I'll blow you up here. All right, see the step around the edge on the inside? That washer fills that in. It sits just like that right there on the end. So when you tighten up the jet, you're actually holding that orifice inside. If you don't, see this right here was sitting in there? That orifice can pull through and then you're going to have all kinds of issues. Okay? So make sure you can do that. And also... You want to hold this up to the light and see if you can see, um, if you can see light through it, which I know I can because I already cleaned this, but we're doing it again. Okay, so there's that. And I want to show you guys, you know, I already cleaned this carburetor and now I have to do it again. And this is my own fault because I didn't use my, my, uh, carburetor stand, but I, I kind of meant to do this at the same, at the same token to show you guys. So this right here, when I'm done, this is going to sit right on that intake like that and I'll, I'll put a weight on the back of it to hold it down I'll put um, fuel to it and make sure there's no leaks all right after this thing's all ultrasonic cleaned all right the next thing I want to do is remove the orifice from the inside now you don't want to put a screwdriver in that and you don't want to bang it from the middle so I'm going to show you guys what I use and that's another reason why I use this wooden surface here to show you guys this I grab my 3 8 little socket set and I took out the 3 sixteenths, which I have in my hand. It's just a deep socket, 3 sixteenths. I set it in the center, and I, I use my my two fingers, my, my index, and my, uh, my middle finger and my thumb to kind of center it. Like that. So it's nice and centered. I use the end of a screwdriver. And go all the way down until it pops out. I can work it out with my fingers. Takes a, a couple of seconds because I'm basically just working it out with my fingers. That falls down. This is what the orifice looks like. Okay. Do you see that hole in the center? All right. So that hole in the center lines up with that air hole. So you can see right there. Actually, you can see it. See how it goes right straight through the carburetor and goes into there. If you look, if you, uh, let me see if I get something to point this with. If you look around the outer side, you will see that there is a, uh, a space all the way around. The center part, right there, is for the needle. Okay, the needle goes in and out of that. So when this thing is running, it pulls. It's pulling the uh, fuel out. All right, so keep that in mind. It's pulling the fuel. This is the main jet's down bottom, and the fuel travels up that rod, the center rod, and into the engine. The outer part is strictly for air, and that's where it gets its air feed. If that's blocked up, that can cause it. Now, if you look down bottom, 
there is no hole for the air okay see there's no holes on the sides there's nothing it's just all all solid so this is one piece that tube is actually part of the part of where the threads are as it goes up through the center okay that's all one piece so the only air opening is right here which coincidentally is that jet right there so you want to make sure that when you put air to this you can blow out and it'll come out through that side okay let's see if I can show you guys that on the carburetor I'm looking right let's see if I can go this way um, you guys can vaguely see that if you look right there see that hole in the side of the wall um, I can't show it that way but there's um you got to make sure that that hole breathes all the way through okay and that is how that works okay the next part you want to take out is your your uh, seat all right on some carburetors this does not come out um, on some carburetors there's a filter in back of it but on this particular carburetor this Makunis they unscrew so we're going to take that out it's an eight millimeter or five sixteenths okay now here's why you want to take this out and let me show you okay so here's the hole right here and you see how fat the bank is around that see how wide that opening is in there debris or debris can build up along the side of it and you'll miss that in the cleaning and then when you go to start the bike the fuel coming through this will take that debris that's get, get got loosened up but not cleaned out and we'll put it through the needle and seat and then you'll be leaking okay this right here is the biggest contributor to a carburetor leaking out these two uh, vents all right so when you have fuel leaking out let's take a look at that when you have fuel leaking out one or two things are happening do you see these tubes the fuel level see right there how it uh, protrudes to the top past this thing all right so what's happening is your floats if your floats are out of adjustment fuel level will climb and then it will go down these tubes and out to the bottom and leak on the bottom of the ground if you have a hole in your float that will pull the float down allowing the fuel level to rise and do the same thing it'll go past the float it'll go past the uh these tubes right here and then leak out the bottom and onto the ground okay third if you have a worn needle and seat uh, let's grab that needle real quick if this has a groove around the top of it remember i was telling you if there's like a ring on it, like a, and you can feel it with your fingernail, and you go like this, and you can feel like a, a catch, and then it goes down, that's a bad needle. You can typically clean that up with 3,000 grit sandpaper. You know, just clean it up a bit. Um, that can cause the fuel to leak past the needle. Even if your float is good, and it's correctly adjusted, fuel can still flow past this needle if it's, if it's worn out, or if the seat's worn out. All right? The other thing that can cause that happening... Number four is to use, if you can focus, go on focus camera, this spring in the back here. If that's worn out or stays in, now it doesn't matter what your adjustment is, it's going to be off. Okay? So these are the common things that cause this to leak. The other thing I've seen on rare occasions, in fact, a, um, what do you call it, a couple of subscribers have actually sent me their carburetors because they couldn't figure it out. And it turns out that the gasket right here was leaking the needle and seat were brand new and it was leaking past it was leaking past the um the gasket here so the floats were good the needle and seat were good but the gasket was bad so that's another that that would also have that so there's a few things that could contribute to fuel leaking out the bottom of your carburetor and Basically, what it comes down to is just a general understanding of how that all works. Nobody wants a leaky carburetor, you know? So now, this carburetor right here is stripped naked. Naked as a jaybird. Okay? 
There's nothing in it. It's just a housing and a case. All right. We are going to put this in the ultrasonic cleaner and run it. And then tomorrow night, we're going to throw that back on his bike. Now, I have another carburetor that he gave me that came with that G4. I'm going to clean that as well. All right. So here's the carburetor right here that came on that G4 that he gave me. And I just want to pull off the carburetor bowl because this motor has been sitting for a hundred years. No, I'm just kidding. But it's been sitting for a very long time. And I want to take a look and see what I'm, I'm dealing with on this carburetor. I can tell you right now it's going to be gummy because I can smell it. I can literally smell this thing. This thing is, it's all varnish. Alright, so now... Like all the screws are off and you can see how it's stuck to it. That's not a bad thing. Let's see if we can break that free. Need a screwdriver to tap with. Okay. I'm using my hands. The, your hands are one of your best tools you have. So I'm grabbing this and holding the bowl. Because I don't want the bolt to come flying off. And I don't want to rip the gasket. So what I do is I hold it in my, my hands. See how I got it clamped? I got it clamped between this and this. This and this. Okay. And then I'm, I'm whacking it until it breaks it free. See that? Can you smell that? Woof. Now look at this, guys. I want to show you this. Okay. See how the bowl, the, the pontoons are sucked in? This thing's been, this thing got, uh, I forgot what does it. I think it's, 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 uh, heat. And it sucks them in. There might be a leak on that. I'm not really too worried about that. Too concerned about it. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to mix up, mix up the parts. And I can tell you right now that these jets are clear, uh, clogged up. When I see a jet like that right there, I know that if I take this screwdriver, I'm just going to strip it out. So what I like to do is take this carburetor right here the way it is, and I'm going to stick it right in the ultrasonic cleaner. The whole thing. Okay? Gasket ain't coming off. I'm not even going to play with it. I'll sit it right in the ultrasonic cleaner. And do that. Now I want to talk to you guys about something else real quick. Is I have my ultrasonic cleaner cost about 300 bucks. Okay. 250, 300 bucks. I forgot exactly what I paid for. But it's, it's a big one. Okay. Holds over a gallon of, of uh, liquid. So you don't have to get anything like that. They actually sell ultrasonic cleaners at Harbor Freight. For like 70 bucks. Here's the thing about an ultrasonic cleaner. They are designed for jewelry. I don't know if you knew that or not. They are designed to clean jewelry. So if you bought one at Harbor Freight and you clean it out and use it for your jewelry or your necklaces and bracelets or all, any of that type of stuff, your wife's things, your girlfriend's stuff, um, you can use it for that. Um, a lot of people even use the ultrasonic cleaner. So say you have actual silverware, um, you can clean silver, you can clean gold, you can clean diamonds, um, Costume jewelry, all that type of stuff can be cleaned in there. So you don't need to spend something this extravagant. I do it on such a large scale that I have to. Because I can do multiple. I mean, you can see how many carburetors I can fit in this thing. Okay, if I turn this this way, this one this way, I could put another one there. I could put one, two, three, four more carburetors in this thing. You know, so, so one, two, so I could put five this way. And two that way, or put another, you know, you know what I mean? I can even stack them up if I want. I can stick one in the bowl here, too, with the rest of the parts. I mean, I can do a lot of carburetors at one time in this ultrasonic cleaner. I can also do other things, uh, which I have. You can clean cylinders in here. I can put a cylinder in here and get all the debris off of it. I can put a crankshaft in here. And if I have to take the bearings off, like if I want to heat up the bearings, I can literally take the whole crankshaft, stick it in here, cook it, and then the bearings will pop right off the right off the crankshaft. So 
these are things that I can use with my ultrasonic cleaner. This tool has more than one use. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end it there because I want to keep this ca this video exclusively carburetor. I don't want to get into anything else other than carburetor because there's a lot of carburetor problems. And hopefully I address them for you. And when we go to assemble this, I'm going to show you guys that will be on a carburetor part two. Um, I do have carburetor talk videos that you guys can go check out. They are a simple yet complicated device. Its job is to make sure that your engine is getting the air and fuel mix proper. Not oil to um, fuel ratio, but air to fuel ratio. Okay, And it does that using two jets of a fuel system that has been just... It's an amazing tool, okay? It's metered. That's why it's got that needle that goes fat to thin to adjust the airflow, uh, a fuel flow, I mean, coming up through. I mean, this thing is really, really cool. But you have to know that absolutely everything has to be clean. And some things we can't see. We can't see how clean that is inside there. We can only assume. I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. And I think it's clean. I pull it out and I stick it on the bike. And then it leaks. Or leaks down like it did on Aaron's bike. Okay. That is why I came up with this tool. So I can bench press it. Uh, bench press it. Bench test it before I put it on the bike. Which makes my job a whole lot easier. I put a gas can up top. I fill it up with gasoline. And then I look at the clear line. So I use clear fuel line when I test them. And I'm able to see if my fuel level is dropping. So if I went out and bought Kawasaki Green, this is Monster Fuel Line, but if I put this on my bike, I can't see the fuel level. So that makes it difficult when I'm testing. So that is why this stuff right here, this is for ATVs and all that. This is clear blue. Um, and I try to match them to the bikes, so you can get these in green, you can get them in yellow. Uh, so if you have a, if you have a KE, uh, yellow KE, you can use yellow fuel line. If you have a blue one, which is what I'm using on Dave Suzuki and on Aaron's blue bike, um, you can get this in red, which really looks cool. But the, the idea is to see what's going on. And the same thing, I use the same line on the oil tanks, so I can see that my oiler is getting, is receiving oil, is, is receiving oil. Because if I have this hooked up to my oil line and this is empty, oh boy, we have a problem, you know. So, and if this right here was on my bike and it was on the oil tank and it was and it was an air bubble in here and there was no oil flowing through, I would know that my vent was clogged. So, just things like that, you know. But I always check that stuff. You have to know what to look for when you have these older bikes. So anyway, guys, I am off. I want to say thank you guys for subscribing and thank you for sharing my channel. I got my report card yesterday from uh, YouTube and I got 266 shares. Um, why is that important to me? I want to talk to you guys a little bit about that real quick. When you guys share my channel and someone subscribes, um, this helps us grow. The more we grow, the more we can do. The more we can do is because of you. And that is a big thing. And I really, really applaud you guys. Thank you. Thank you for helping me grow. Thank you for helping this channel grow. And I hope you guys are learning something. That's what this is about. That's why I showed you tonight every little nook and cranny on this carburetor and how it works and the different techniques I do. Like, I would not try pulling that off at all. I just leave it on there. I'll throw that on the ultrasonic cleaner. It'll clean up as much as it can. And then I'll take it apart. Aaron's bike was already clean for the most part and so taking it apart when it was looking okay then it's okay to you know you get the green light you kind of got to use common sense with it you know like okay i know that that's not gonna come off just by looking at me come on look at that it looks terrible but this is a good carburetor i have another set of floats i could throw on this carburetor this will be a good carburetor all right so I do appreciate that. And like I said, all my shares have gone up. My views have gone up. My watch time has gone up. All that stuff has gone up, and that's because of you. Once again, I am not making much money doing this. Um, well, I'll just, I'll just tell you, I made in one month time, for all the knowledge that I, I shared, it was just over 100 bucks. So knowledge, 
for how much you make on YouTube is not really a whole lot. I don't have a lot of sponsors. I do have a couple every now and then, but nothing, nothing dramatic. Um, so I appreciate that, and I appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. And um, I put out the, what I call my APB, looking for one of these, and Darren sent me up one, which is awesome. Thank you again, Darren, because um, I'm going to be using these to build more. These are not complicated, but they are complicated if you're not familiar with them. And that's why I do repetition. I'll go over it a couple times. I will I will t revert you back to my carb talk videos, and you guys can check those out as well once again. Um, and feel free, once again, the most important thing, it's not, it's not the subscribers. It's not the views. It's not the shares. What's important is that your bikes, you guys at home have the opportunity to have someone who can help you work with you. And that's what I try to do on this channel. I try to answer your questions. I try to help you out and give you the best advice I possibly can. And because of you guys, this channel is growing. Okay? So, once again, thank you guys very much. Sorry for talking your ear off on that. I'm just, I'm blown away by the support. So, once again, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And thank you for sharing. And if you guys haven't hit that bell icon, please do. So, when I post a video, you guys get it. Alright? I will talk to you guys later. I'm out.